You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. Hey, what's going on everyone? Kenan here and it is time for another Ask Camp Kenan question. Today is a good question and it's actually going to bring me off on a tangent because we're going to talk about the differences between brumation and hibernation because a lot of us get that confused, myself included, uh, but today we are going to wade through the the similarities of both states of dormancy, uh, but we're going to actually make a little sense of it, and I think you guys will come away. And we're even gonna throw estivation into the mix too. All are different forms of dormancy that certain animals go through. Uh, but first, the Ask Cam Cannon question. This was uh, given to us by Jessica Bella, and Jessica is one of our Patreon supporters, and uh, we appreciate all your support on Patreon. If you guys are interested in becoming a Patreon supporter and helping us out here at the camp uh, with the videos and the education, please go to patreon.com slash camp cannon. Okay, so as promised, I'm going to read her question, we're going to try and answer it, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the differences in dormancy in reptiles and other animals. Okay, so her question is, hey Kenan, is it healthier for sulcata tortoises to go through a period of brumation? I've known several people who allow their sulcatas to brumate without issues. But others say it's not necessary. What are your thoughts? All right, very good. Uh, great question. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for submitting that. I hope I'm gonna answer it to the best of my abilities uh, and sound somewhat educated. Uh, but first things first, uh, hibernation and brumation are two different forms of dormancy. And reptiles don't actually hibernate. Reptiles actually brumate. Now, what is the difference between hibernation and brumation? Well, hibernating reptiles will punctuate that, that dormancy with some brief periods of activity. Uh, they actually don't go into a true sleep like chipmunks or bears. The other thing that's interesting is they must drink in their hibernation, uh, which is pretty impressive. So that means uh, that, uh, excuse me, in their brumation, a brumating reptile will still drink but a hibernating mammal will not. And hibernation is a true sleep where there is no waking up. Uh, they just sleep through the winter. But brumation, as I mentioned, is punctuated by uh, brief moments of activity. For example, those of you who live up north, uh, I used to live up in Long Island, New York, and I would experience every now and again in January or February the odd 65, 70 degree day. Um, I've also lived in Pennsylvania and it has gotten warm. There are brief warm spells in the winter and what will happen? Well, the reptiles wake up and they'll sun themselves. Uh, so they come out of brumation, they'll sun themselves on a rock or something to warm up, uh, but then they'll go back to their uh, refuge when it gets cold again. So they're not waking up or rather a hibernating mammal is going to stay asleep during that period. Another interesting fact about brumating reptiles is brumating reptiles uh, will, will actually uh, store not just fat but glycogen and the glycogen gets stored in their muscles and because of this glycogen um, this is one of the differences between hibernating mammals and brumating reptiles. Hibernating mammals will have the same amount of oxygen saturation in their blood. They may breathe slower, but their blood is definitely being uh, oxygenated the same way and they require uh, similar levels of oxygen in their bloodstream. Reptiles, because of the glycogen, they don't need as much oxygen in their blood. And we've all heard the stories about the good old painted turtle from the northern parts of North America. Uh, very wide ranging reptile uh, in North America. It goes all the way from Nova Scotia in Canada down into the mid latitudes of the continental United States and then all the way west into Colorado and parts of western Canada. This animal holds the record as the turtle 
and land breathing or air breathing land breathing air breathing vertebrate that can hold its breath the longest no other animal can hold its breath longer than a painted turtle now we're looking at sulcatas and i'm going to get to your question jessica you don't worry but first i just want to continue to educate you guys on the differences between brumation and hibernation so how does the painted turtle do that well number one uh, they have a lot of glycogen in their uh, muscles, in their bloodstream, and that allows them to basically not have to breathe as much. In fact, their heart may beat once uh, or a few times every 10 minutes. Uh, they'll also breathe through the tissues or absorb oxygen through the tissues directly from their environment, from the water, through their cloaca and the linings in their mouth. So it's quite impressive survival tactic, especially when winters can be quite long. Uh, so that's very important. Now, we know the differences between brumation and hibernation, right? Uh, so hibernation is a true sleep. Mammals do it. Uh, oxygen levels remain the same. Uh, they don't wake up in warm spells, but brumation is a state of dormancy for reptiles in which they will punctuate it with some activity. If the weather warms up, they'll get active. They might drink. Uh, they won't normally eat, but they'll drink and hydrate themselves. And then when it gets cool again, they go back into that dormant dormancy. Now, the other cool thing about brumation and what scientists have found is reptiles actually, some of them actually need it in order to become uh, sexually reproductive in order to trigger the hormones to let them know or to recharge those hormones so that they can then wake up and breed in the spring. So pretty interesting stuff. Now on to the Patreon question from Jessica. She asks, is it a good idea to allow your tortoises to go into brumation? Uh, and don't worry, I am going to get into the third aspect of dormancy, which is estivation. And we're going to do that right now talking about sulcatas. Well, the first thing first, sulcatas come from a part of the world where they don't need to brumate. Uh, they don't really experience cold temperatures for very long. They may have cold nights, but that's why they use a burrow. They dig that burrow and it helps them out because what it's doing is it's creating a microclimate down there. Uh, it's a steady environment. If it's too hot uh, in the sub-Saharan sun or the Sahal sun right along the fringe of the Sahara Desert, they just go into that burrow during the hottest parts of the day and then kind of wake up during the Goldilocks hours, which is usually dawn and dusk. They're a crepuscular tortoise. Uh, they're active at dawn and dusk uh, and tar parts of the day uh, that during certain times of the year aren't super hot because as we know they're cold-blooded right and so they have to operate according to their uh, surrounding temperature and they have to do behavioral modifications in order to keep their body temps running nice and smooth like basking and or getting in the shade. So they don't necessarily brumate because of the cold. Now all reptiles are pretty fascinating animals because they don't require as much food as their warm-blooded counterparts, as the mammals. And that's because of their slow metabolism being cold-blooded. They're operating, even when it's quite warm, they're operating at a lower temperature than most mammals. Uh, or if they're operating at a higher temperature, it's not for very long. Whereas we have homeostasis inside our bodies. Uh, the chemical process of breaking down food creates heat, keeps our body warm. We're always running at a high temperature, okay? So that means we have to continually consume calories in order to maintain ourselves. Well, reptiles, they don't need to do that. So if things get too bad in the desert or anywhere else for that matter, take the good old, take the good old painted turtle again. If the painted turtle is in an area that is being hit by a drought, well, what do they do? They go dormant again. But this time, if it's hot and dry, the dormancy is called estivation. And it's basically them shutting themselves down so they don't expend any kind of energy or reserves so they can just basically wait out that bad environmental time. It's pretty impressive. Uh, so the question is, is it okay to let them brumate uh, or estivate? I don't think so in captivity. It's unnecessary. Um, you know, these animals, uh, when they're kept out here, uh, we have conditions because we're always feeding them. We're always keeping them warm. We have the barns and so on uh, and the heaters in the barns to keep these animals from getting into a, a temperature that would be lethally too cool. Uh, and then again, lethally too hot. Now, um, I don't see the point in letting them do that in captivity. Uh, in the wild, they would only estivate 
if in fact it got extremely hot for super long periods of time they'll just kind of wait it out and that's why reptiles are fantastic survivors that's why these are the animals that have been around since the age of dinosaurs because they can wait out the bad spells they can kind of just tough it out slow their bodies down whether it's cold or too hot and just wait for the environmental conditions to become well more like good old Goldilocks again. So even though we're talking about brumation, estivation, and hibernation, uh, we're learning a few things here about sulcatus. They're tough beasts. This is lumpy. And uh, what are they doing right now? Well, super hot. You see him laying down. He's creating a larger surface area. And uh, they'll do that to absorb solar radiation. And they'll also do it to cool off. And that's what he's doing right now. He's cooling off. And in just a little while, the temperatures are going to be perfect for them to walk around and graze on all that yummy green grass that they have floating around here. So guys, this was a really good question. Thanks, Jessica. Um, you know, my thoughts are, yeah, you don't need to let them brumate. Just keep them nice and healthy uh, and they'll live a long time because even though the temperatures may be perfect for them, they're still operating at a lower temperature than a mammal. So they've got a nice, long, consistent life ahead of them if you do the right thing by feeding them the right foods and give them the right habitat. A lot of questions about sulcatas. They're a popular animal, one of my favorite tortoises. Thank you guys so much for submitting those questions. I had a good time. I think we learned a lot. I hope I didn't butcher it up. Now, uh, I'm sure some of you may understand the process even better. If you're a scientist or a PhD out there, go ahead and comment below. Help us out. See if I missed anything. We can all help each other learn. But I promise you, the information I'm giving you is pretty good stuff. So go ahead down there. Leave a comment. Leave a like if you liked the video, if you learned something today. And thank you so much for uh, submitting that question, Jessica. I'm Cannon. I'm gonna go stroll around and see what else I can find here in the backyard. There's always something fun going on. And uh, we'll have more videos for you soon. Thanks again, guys. Don't forget, go to patreon.com slash Camp Cannon to help us help you and uh, continue the love for these amazing animals. How about a leopard tortoise to see us out?